G'day, welcome to the Tech Math Channel. What we're going to be having a look at in this video is Pythagoras' theorem. So sit back and enjoy. And if you like this video, please remember underneath the uh, video there, there's a little like button. Please give it a poke. Uh, and first off, before I start, also a big shout out to my uh, very, very first patron. Your support is really, really appreciated. So with all that out of the way, uh, let's launch into this video, Pythagoras' theorem. So Pythagoras' theorem is applicable to a specific type of shape, which is this shape here. It's a triangle. More specifically, it's a triangle that has one of these guys in it, a right angle. It's a right angle triangle. And what Pythagoras' theorem allows us to do is if we know at least two of the side lengths, so say we knew this side length and this side length, we could use Pythagoras' theorem to work out a third unknown side length. Or if we knew this side length and this side length, we could use Pythagoras' theorem to work out this third unknown side length. So it's really, really handy and comes up quite frequently in a lot of things in maths. So how do we go about doing this? Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, the very first thing we have to do is we have to look at our right angle triangle here and we have to identify one particular part of it, which is the longest side. It has a specific name, which is called the hypotenuse. So here, you're going to notice the longest side here, which is directly opposite this 90 degree here. This longer side here is called the hypotenuse. Okay, I'll write it down. All right, once we know this, we can apply Pythagoras' theorem, which is this. It's, I'm going to write the, the rule down, which is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And I'll tell you what this means. This a, b, and c here are relating to different sides here. A and B are the two shorter sides. So these two shorter sides, either one could be A and either one could be B. So I'll label them here, A and B. The longer side here is C. So what this Pythagoras' theorem tells us is this. If we get the length of one of the shorter sides and square it, and we add that to the length of the other shorter side, which has been squared, this is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So it's really, really handy. We can use this to work out our unknown side lengths. So let's go about doing that right now. Okay, for our first example, we have a right angle triangle. We have two known side lengths, three and four, and we have a third unknown side length, which we're gonna try and find out. So the very first thing we do when using Pythagoras' theorem is to identify the longest side, which in this case is very clearly this one here. Okay, so we're gonna call this one C. All right, the other two, we can call A and B. It doesn't matter which one we call which. I'm going to call this one A and this one B. The second thing we're going to do now is substitute in our values of A and B to work out C. So let's do that. We know that A here is equal to 3. So A squared becomes 3 squared. To this, we're going to add B squared, which B is equal to 4. So this becomes 4 squared. And this is equal to C squared. All right, so let's work this out. 3 squared is equal to 9. 4 squared is equal to 16. And this is equal to C squared. All right, 9 plus 16 is 25. This is equal to C squared. Therefore, how do we work out what C is equal to? Well, the opposite of squared is square root. So we're going to work out the square root of 25. C is equal to the square root of 25 which is equal to 5. So this unknown side here is equal to 5. All right, this is a fairly common triangle that comes out. Okay, this is a Pythagorean triad. Okay, we have a 3, 4, and 5. Okay, and you're going to see this. Quite often multiples of these go into it too. Well, they do. All right, let's go through a few other examples of these. Okay, in this example, we have a right angle triangle. Once again, we have two sides that we know the length of. We have this side length here, which is four, and this side length here, which is nine. And we're gonna try and determine this unknown side length. So let's go about using Pythagoras' theorem to do this. So what do we do first? We identify the longest side, the hypotenuse, which is directly opposite our 90 degrees here, this one here. So we label this one C. The other two, we can label A and B. So now let's substitute in our values. Okay, so A squared, well, we don't know what this is, so we're just going to leave that as a squared. Plus b squared. Well, b squared, b is equal to 4, so we're going to put 4 squared in here. And this is equal to c squared. Well, c is equal to 9, so this becomes 9 squared. Let's work these out. 
a squared stays as a squared. Uh, 4 squared is 16. And 9 squared is 81. So now we have to get this a squared by itself. And to do that, we're going to take 16 off both sides. We're going to get rid of the 16 by taking it away here and subtracting it over here as well. We're going to end up with this. We're going to end up with a squared being equal to 81 minus 16, which is equal to a squared being equal to 65. Well, if a squared is equal to 65, once again, how do we get rid of this squared here? Well, we square root, okay? So a is going to equal the square root of 65, which is going to equal how much? So you might need your calculator to work that out, but a is going to be equal to 8.1. Close enough, I've rounded that to the R, just that first decimal place there. So anyway, nice and simple. It doesn't get much, much harder than that with Pythagoras' theorem. It's a really, really handy, simple formula to use, okay? So let's go through a couple more examples of these. Okay, for this example here, once again, we have a right angle triangle. We have two known side lengths, one of six and one of eight, and we're going to try and determine this unknown side length using Pythagoras' theorem. So let's go about doing that. You might even give this a go before I give it a go. The first thing you're going to do is go through and work out which one is the hypotenuse, which is going to be our C value here. So you're going to see the longest side here, the hypotenuse, is this one here. That's going to be C. The other two you can label as A and B. So let's go through now and substitute in. A is equal to 6, so A squared is going to be 6 squared. To this you're going to add B squared, which B is equal to 8, so this is 8 squared. And this is equal to C squared. All right, uh, let's work these out. So 6 squared is 36, 8 squared is 64, and this is equal to c squared. So we're going to add these two guys together here. We have 36 plus 64, which is equal to 100. And this is equal to c squared. All right. So what are we going to do to work out what c is? Well, we're going to work out the square root of 100 here. So c is going to be equal to the square root of 100. Now, the square root of 100 is equal to 10. So our side length here is equal to 10. And this is another one of those triads I was talking about before. You're going to see that uh, if we divide this by 2, this would be 3, this would be 4, this would be 5. Okay, so this 3, 4, 5 triangle coming out again. But this is twice as big this time. Well, twice as big on each side. Okay, so uh, anyway, let's go through another example. Okay, in this example here, we have a right angle triangle once again. We have two known side lengths, one of 17 and one of seven, and we're going to use these to determine an unknown side length, which is right here. Okay, so we're going to use Pythagoras' theorem to do that. So the very first thing you do is you're going to go through and work out the longest side. Really obvious, it's this one here. Okay, so we label that one C, and the other two sides A and B. And now we just start putting in our values into the formula here. So A is equal to seven, so A squared becomes seven squared. B squared, well, this one we don't know. So let's just leave that as B squared. And this is equal to C squared. C is equal to 17. So 17 squared. We work these out now. So 7 squared is equal to 49. Plus B squared is equal to 17 times 17, which is 289. Okay, so we have to get b squared by itself now. Okay, so let's do that. I'll put it over here by itself. And to do that, we'd take 49 off this side and we'd take 49 off this side. So we take 49 off this side, we'd just get rid of it. And we end up with 289 take away 49, which is equal to, b squared is equal to 240. If that's the case, b is going to be equal to the square root of 240. So what's the square root of 240? Well, this is equal to 15.5. And once again, where it's been rounded. So uh, hopefully you find these nice and easy. Pythagoras' theorem, really, really simple to use. Just go through that really, really formalic, uh, logical way of doing it. Find the longest side first, label your sides, enter them into the old a squared, plus b squared equals c squared, and get your answer from there. You can't go too far wrong. Anyway, hopefully you liked that video. If you do, once again, remember to hit the like button underneath the video here, 
And please remember to subscribe. And like my very first patron here, if you'd like to uh, become a patron of the Tech Math channel, it'd be really, really appreciated. And it does give you a bit of say in where the channel heads and what type of videos may be made. So uh, that would be really, really uh, appreciated as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.